fabric friends today we are working on our rainbow collage kit that you picked up from curio make sure you open it get yourself a pencil and i'll show you everything you need to make your project So today, instead of a paint kit, we're working on the idea of collage, using paper and glue to make a really cool rainbow shape. So when you open your kit, these are all the different papers that you'll need, along with this little fabric for clouds and a Q-tip to apply your glue with when we're ready for that point. So you can start to take everything apart. You can unwrap your canvas if it has this plastic paper on it, and we're gonna use our rainbow to be able to trace our image onto our project. So the first thing I'm going to do is get myself a pencil. That is not included in the kit. You're going to lay your canvas out and put your rainbow on top and put it towards the middle. You don't want part of your rainbow cut off. When I lay this down in the middle, I'm going to hold it tight or a grown-up could put some tape on the back of it so that it doesn't slide around. And you can hold it down tight or tape it Use your pencil and hold it nice and straight, nice and up and down. And you're going to trace all the way around it so that you have a perfect rainbow shape instead of needing to erase over and over again. When you remove it, you have this awesome, ready to go rainbow. So for our project today, we are using paper and we're going to be using glue. You can feel free to use the glue that's provided to you. We also put in a Q-tip so that if you take the kit somewhere, you can have everything you need to do it with. Or you could absolutely use an old paintbrush to apply your glue. You could choose to use a glue bottle if you have one at home instead. So this is great for a lot of different age ranges because you can do many different things for your project. You could use scissors for cutting, you could use hands for ripping. You could do a mixture of both too. So this is more examples of what you can do, not what you have to do. The first thing I did was I took apart all of my different colors and I set them in rainbow order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And this light blue I'm going to use for my sky. So what I'm going to do first is taking my Q-tip and my bag of glue, I'm going to put a little bit of glue where my red is going to be. Red is our first color, and I'm going to do a little bit of glue at a time because I don't want it to dry out by the time I'm ready for it. So you can either put your glue on first, or you can cut all your paper first, or you could do a little bit of both. I'm gonna do a little bit of kind of gluing and ripping at the same time. So if you would like to let your child use scissor skills, this would be a great way to have them learning to cut these little strips like this. If you are an older artist and you have some of those really cool scissors that have designs on them, you could always cut and use those different designs. And we're gonna take these little pieces and we're gonna lay them in our first kind of section here. So it could look something like that. You could rip pieces and have them be a little bit more uneven if you want to. I actually think I like the idea of ripping them instead. And you can continue spreading out your glue and doing your first line of your colors. Now, one thing with collage is that it doesn't it's not like a perfect thing. At least, you know, art's never perfect. So it's okay if you go a little bit outside of the lines. It's okay if your pieces aren't perfectly exactly the same size. That's fine. Art making is always about making sure that you're having fun. At least at a young age, it should be for sure. So we're gonna continue our red. And like I said, it's up to you if you want to do something where you are ripping or if you want to do something where you're cutting. You could do a mixture of both. This is totally for you to create however you want it to be and however you want your project to look. These are all just suggestions and you can do what you think is best. Oh, it stuck to me instead of my canvas. 
that's a little better. And I am gonna take off these couple pieces. They were nice examples, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the ripped look instead. I really like that, it's really different. Anything extra that you have, you could always save it. I know at our house we have a giant scrap bin. This is a little too big, so I'm gonna rip it again. And you can always use those pieces that you've saved from other projects for different crafts and different scraps at home, different things you might make. It's always fun to keep those extra things. I'm just gonna put a little bit more glue on some of these spots. So that would be kind of using the bag of glue that came with it. If you're helping your artist or your artist is older, you're more than welcome to use a glue bottle. I recommend whenever you teach gluing that you want to try to stick with little dots. So when you're working with your artist, you might wanna show them just to put some little dots across their paper. Sometimes whenever we show artists that are little to do a strip like this, it's just big, huge mass amounts. Um, or maybe you're working with your artist and you are going to put that on for them. That's totally fine. This can be a family activity. Those are always fun. Or it can be, as Dave likes to say, a leave me alone activity where your artist just goes and you get a little bit of time as an adult alone because they're engaged in making and creating their own piece of art. <laughs> That's always an awesome thing to have those kiddos be depend independent too and not dependent on you all the time. So I'm going to make sure that just a little bit that I overlap because I don't want to see the white canvas through my colors. So I'm going to overlap this just a little bit so that I'm able to not see the white through it and be able to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. And I'm going a little fast. You can go much slower. Sometimes I even tell my little artists to count to 10 in their head to make sure that you're having your glue nicely stick. A lot of times young artists will say like, oh, my glue's not working, it's not sticking, but it's because they're not holding it down as long as they should, because sometimes we don't have a lot of patience. And if this is too big, you could always rip it or cut it so that it fits. Awesome, and we are going to continue doing this the entire time with all of our different colors moving the whole way through until we get to purple at the very end.
Okay, so after all of the paper has been attached to our collage, I let it dry and then I took my scissors and I cut along the edge so that it was a really nice, crisp, clean edge. But you don't have to do that at all, or you could even have a parent help. So this is your finished product or you could take it one step further. So I decided in our studio space to go through and try to find all kinds of little fun extra items that I could add on to my project to make it more exciting than it already even is. So some of the different things I found that you might have around your house to add extra fun to your rainbow would be things like ribbon, yarn, pom-poms, I also have these different fun foam shapes with different colors, different pieces of fabric, fun little pieces that came in like some little art kits that were left over, buttons, beads, any kind of things that you might wanna add onto your rainbow collage, you could totally add if you want to. I even found these daubers in my four-year-old's bin that she likes to use. So we could use many different art supplies to still have us kind of make these really interesting. So I could, in the purple if I wanted to, I could do some dabbing or daubing with these. I could start to glue some of these different shapes and different fun things onto my rainbow just to make it a little bit more exciting a little bit more 3D and bring it to life. What I'm going to do though is I'm gonna make sure that I match my colors, which is great for our little artists too, to make sure that they're trying to make connections between colors. So making sure that red sticks with red is important. Not all the time for every project, but especially with this today, we're working on trying to make sure that we can identify and match colors and kind of making sure that those skill sets are specific to our learners that are working on this project that are little to try and make recognitions of colors. And you could even, if you have things that you wanna cut in half, you could do that and use your scissors for it. But this is a great way to use up maybe some of those random things at home that you're not quite sure what to do with and you've just been holding on to them for a little bit, but you're not quite sure what you wanna do with them yet. And maybe I could even add some of these into the sky if I wanted to. Sometimes the sky has different areas of blue depending on how the sun hits it. Oh my goodness, I could even add like a button into the sky, even though it's not matching with blue, this could become my sun if I wanted to, or maybe some things could become clouds. I could even get some cotton balls or put some of these buttons into the sky to look like it was clouds. So this is a really fun, open-ended project for you to be able to create it yourself. Decide what you think works best and looks best for your project. You can make it as simple or as tricky as you want it to be. You could make it as involved as you want or as simple as you want. And it's great for all different age groups because you can really help as much as you want also. Whoops. You could help a lot and really use it as a opportunity to teach a lot about color or you could use it in a way that your child's just able to create in a way that they want to and totally leave them to be able to have fun doing that on their own. So these are just a few suggestions. As always, we hope that you subscribe to our page so that you can see all the different fun, cool videos, DIY kits, awesome happenings at Curio. Make sure you check out our website, subscribe to our newsletter so that you always know all the awesome, cool things that are taking place. CurioCool.com or subscribe to our YouTube page at CurioCool.